G'day everyone, welcome to Life on the Hulls. I'm Ross, I'm a boat builder. I'm building this 40 foot catamaran from composite foam core materials. I'm here working on my deck mold. Now this mold has had a lot of repairs and a lot of restorative work required to get it ready for gel coating in the next two weeks and then the subsequent laminates and foam core composites that I'm going to be applying to get this deck finished. Now this week I'm going to be concentrating on the big deck tent mold structure uh, basically I needed to put a tent up over it to uh, obviously to work on it and it saved my bacon in the last couple of months given the uh, amount of rain that we've had here over the last uh, few weeks but uh, this structure has taken a lot of detail to get it in place it is slightly narrower than the actual mold itself so there's a couple of ways I've had to deal with that I'm going to start to show you that this week don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, and thanks for joining me guys and let's get into it So as I move into this whole new phase of the build, I've got to sort of step back to when I made the pivot legs for the outside of the actual mold. Now the problem is, now that I've flipped that over, I have nothing there to pivot the mold back over uh, when it comes time to do mold and then roll the mold back over again. So I've set about making uh, legs for the other side and, and this basically requires using all the steel that I had laying around from the original mold purchase. Now luckily I'm able to store this stuff. I know a lot of people sort of suffer for space but I've got a little bit of space I'm able to store all of these uh, eye beams and then make up these legs. Now these are actually going to have a double purpose. Not only will I be able to pivot the deck mold back over into the upright position again at the end, but I'll also be able to hang the tent off it. Now the second tent that I purchased, I purchased through uh, an auction house in Queensland, um, and I won the auction at $340 for the tent. Now those tents are around about $3,000 Australian dollars, and my original eight meter wide tent and 40 foot long tent was, uh, was $6,000. This one I ended up paying once I uh, discovered that I hadn't actually met the reserve price, I ended up paying around 1900 Australian dollars. So although I thought I'd met the reserve, uh, it was a bit of a trap and uh, I ended up paying around about $2,200 having it delivered and, uh, and these legs were a little bit of an essential to make sure that it was all going to work. All right, so Johnny and I have got these cantilevered mounts for the tent. We've, uh, these are the pivot legs that I turned over. I'm going to have a multi-use for them. That there uh, is now level with the front one. And that's going to give me the level for the middle one here. So the middle one here is going to sit there and then I'm going to adjust the post to the right height at the front to uh, suspend this tent off. So we don't want to damage the surface of the mould, so we're putting this bit of wood here, but I don't know whether it's actually doing anything. But hopefully it'll stop me burning a hole in the mould. There like that. Try and catch any sparks. Looks good. Cool. Alright, last hole on this side. I've managed to do no damage to the mould yet.
down. But I've got to put three arms, one there, one there, and one there, just like I've done on the other side. Very important. I've got to weld them on, and they're as heavy as hell, and I've got no one here to help me. So I'm going to use this ladder, clamp it in place. It's all a struggle. It's always a struggle. I've got my posts in ready for the tent. I need to put in these arms, and then I pretty much can start assembling my tent. And the last one, this has been a bit of a project doing these these big arms, but they're key to supporting this tent. Because I'm cheap, my tent's not wide enough to cover the mould, so I've got to make these big support arms. Now, these are going to have a secondary benefit, these legs. When the mould is sat back on the deck again, they're actually going to act as supports to hold the whole thing together so that it can be transported or stored correctly, and I can use these to actually cup over the top of the hull. The problem was before they they were actually uh, the mold the deck wanted to slide inside the hull. So what I'm trying to do is get to sit neatly and then be able to brace it so it's locked in place for whoever wants to use the mold next. So there yeah, a lot of a lot of work going on here. But now I've got these tacked on. I'll be able to come and finish the welds, get the supports on, and get the tents on. One more to go. I've got to trim this one. I wasn't going to put this one on, but I've decided I need an extra. Well, that was a really good morning's work. I've got, um, essentially, I've got all of the legs in place now. I've put the uh, internal step in on this bow one right down here. And then I'm basically going to uh, cut these ones to level to my string line. The problem is, because it's wet, I don't want to be plasma cutting or grinding because that will land on the mould. And wet filings or grind filings landing on the mould will etch into the mould surface. So it has to be a dry day where I can put some um, sh some uh, wood or some you know, blankets or something down to catch any of the iron filings that might land on the mould surface because that mould surface is pretty good and I don't want to end up with any sort of rust in it or any, uh, any further repairs to be done to it at the end of the day. So dry day, very important to get rid of all the iron filings the minute you do any grinding because they will rust into the surface and damage your surface. So So we're going to now run a string line uh, down this side to determine the same levels as I've got here. Um, basically, I'm going to keep that level all the way. Now, it is actually on a downhill, but that is not going to matter for the deck. Certainly will matter for the hull. All I'm doing is trying to make the deck. But the important thing is, once I get the string line right, I'm then going to just square up the whole hull and make sure that it's all square. And it's looking pretty good. You know, I'm pretty happy, with the exception of down the front here. It's actually drooped a little bit. And I need to make sure that I rectify that before going forward.
I'm almost finished. I've just got to cut the tops off these to make them flush because the tent's going to end in where that string line is there and then going to have to, I'm going to have to tarp it outside of it to make sure that all the water runs away uh, in the event of rainfall because it really is an issue because it is so narrow but I've just got to trim the tops off these so it's nice and neat and I'm just uh, going for that now It's been a while since I've had to think about this thing, but I'm just gonna walk around the back of the boat here and uh, have a look down here in this orange box. This is my second container shelter. It's uh, one of these large tents now. Uh, I've, I've already alighted to the fact that I bought a smaller one than I really needed uh, to save about $4,000. It just you know, it just made a lot of sense and I should be able to move it a lot easier than, uh, than getting rid of this oversized one that I have here for the big boat. But for now, I'm going to start unpacking this, start assembling the hoops. I'll probably put some of the hoops in here for the most part and, uh, and start getting ready for assembly of the second tent. I am having a serious deja vu moment here at the moment, right here. I've got the other tent right here. I've got the jigsaw puzzle from hell. It's about 500 pieces. Not everything's numbered. I think I've worked out the system and uh, yeah, I've got to start bolting it all together. What I'm going to do, I'm going to bolt all the hoops together. So I've just assembled one here, one big hoop all the way across. I think there's about 10 of them. And, uh, and then I'm going to place them in place and probably tie them together. Now I was really delighted to discover that this tent had a very different system to the previous one. The previous one, as you can see above my head here, had um, purlins that I had to actually buy to form the base of the actual tent hoops, whereas this one here, the base came with it, and this that's this extended uh, uh, bottom plate that is actually extending across these cantilevered arms that I put in place. Now this actually saved me a hell of a lot of time and, and a lot of money. I already had the purlins ready to put on there, but it saved so much time the way the whole thing interlocked and uh, and obviously a different brand, different method. And uh, it was a much, much easier tent to install this one than the previous one. What's that? What's on fire? Yeah, what is that? Is that you doing burnouts? Reminds me of Christmas rush. Jesus, stop that. Don't mention Christmas. <laughs> That's shocking. Oh, I know you're angry, people get angry for a reason, son. <laughs> Don't they? Of course they do. <laughs> you're terrible, mate. Well, people make you angry because of stupid, idiot people. Yeah, yeah, I'll have to agree with that. <laughs> stupid, idiot people make you cranky. That's the one I want. <laughs> and that's how the world works. If there's some fuckwits around. The world according to John. <laughs> What'd you say, mate? There's dickheads everywhere. Yeah? All over the world. You sure about that? Sharp as bowling balls, they are. <laughs> Think they know it all, they know bugger all. Can I use that? You can use anything you like, mate. <laughs> it's a free world. <laughs> He's a classic. That's why I love John hanging around. Says it as it is. Says what everyone else wants to say. <laughs> Sight foreman over there. Johnny the foreman. That's it.
Now, one thing I learnt with these bolts last time was that they're quite sharp and the fabric actually rubs on them. So I'm gonna put a little uh, tube sleeve over the top of each of these bolts before I install them. Uh, Cause last time I had to get up a ladder and up the scaffold and do it. This time I'm gonna put them on before I put them up. It's amazing you learn as you go forward. And uh, that was three years ago. So uh, yeah, good to, glad I've remembered that. I'm gonna go and cut that, uh, that uh, tube and just slide a little piece over just to protect the fabric. And I'm gonna go home and get my ratchet spent. This is going to give you shit. Wow, that was a big day. Uh, I wasn't gonna put the hoops up, but Johnny came over and said, let's put one half. I said, no, nah, no, nah, it's all right. I wanna do all the, the drilling and the bracketing and everything. He goes, nah, stuff there. Let's just put one up and see how it looks. And uh, I'm glad he did. Sometimes you need to be pushed. You know, I, I tend to uh, not be a procrastinator as you probably have guessed, but it's nice to have someone who sort of pushes you past that, um, that sort of virtual limit, I guess, that, that you think you've got and, and here I am five hours later and the bloody thing's up, you know, because it's just better to get the thing done, you know, run. So I'm pretty wrapped. I've got the whole thing pretty much in place. I've just got to do a few more supports, some drilling tomorrow, some bracketing, and I'm putting the cover over and I can get to work. Let's have a look, shall we? That's looking pretty cool. That's a miniature version of the other one. You realise how big that other tent is when you see this one is only uh, six metres wide. Let's go and have a look inside, eh? Brilliant. We got this up in about three hours.
I had help here about uh, half an hour ago and it started a piss down. So I'm on my own. I'm up here getting it done. I'm going to get this uh, front cover on today and hopefully get the cover on tomorrow and the, the full cover so that we can get the thing under covers so I can get to work on it. Now I'm going to either go and get a ladder and come up the face of it, which is going to be as hairy as hell, or I can stand here and lean over five feet, which is going to be as hairy as hell. I'll choose the latter because um, I just can't be asked being up a ladder uh, on my own. It's not safe enough. But at least if I fall here, I'm going to fall into a barbed wire fence. So I could end up like Steve McQueen, stuck in the barbed wire. Let's get on with it. Right, we'll go down in the front, tie him up, job done. That's looking pretty flash now. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. It's looking a bit sad and droopy like a sad old clown at the moment, so I'm gonna uh, just get it all lashed down now. I haven't quite finished down here and I'll get it flipped over. I've got another ratchet strap in there to help. Oh, that looks better. <laughs> You know, the best part about being in these tents is that uh, no one can see what you're doing. That's always good. And, uh, and I tend to like to have a chat and I'm, we tend to know a lot of people around here because I've had a business here for so long. And every single person that walks past, I say, yeah, how's the boat going, mate? When's the boat going to be finished? I thought you were going to be finished three years ago. It's, uh, that can be pretty challenging to deal with, especially when it's five or six times a day. And every conversation is a, a long-winded one. So having a tent up also gives me privacy, lets me get on with my work.